and I love them. And I give them who here? My church family here. Amen. And I love you all. Just help us to worship God, because y'all, he's worthy. Yes. Yeah, Amen.
Yeah. 
for me. I, I take it personal. Now those of you, those of you who hadn't done nothing, if you haven't done nothing, then you might get sit there quietly. But folks like me who have messed up, woo! I, 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 I take it personally. I take it personally. I take it personally. Personally. Caught me 50 years ago. I wouldn't have been up here on no Sunday morning. Uh-uh. Wouldn't even be close to a church. Yeah. But, 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 okay, okay. To God be the glory. I want to say good morning to all of you. Thank God for this day. Thank God for all of you who push your way out to, to come to the house of worship. And we're going to praise God today. We're going to have a good time. And I want you to know that keep us in your prayers. I want to thank this choir. Thank this choir for a wonderful job this morning. Lifting our spirits up. Gracious Lord, our Heavenly Father, have your way in this service today. God, we know you are able and we know you can. Bless those who are here and bless those who may be on their way. And Father, this is my, my, my humble prayer. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Uh, Dr. Prasit will come and give us our scripture reading and our prayer and after the prayer the choir will come back with another selection and then I will come that I may have what you're looking for. Good morning. I, I have to agree with the pastor. I remember those days so many years ago when church on Sunday morning was the last place I thought I needed to be. And I couldn't figure out how no folks was having fun in church till I got a little older. And the devil accosted me on occasion and then I figured I needed to be in church. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord coming now from the book of Luke, the fourth chapter beginning with the third verse. Amen. Let's stand on our feet in deference to the word of the Lord if you can. Hallelujah. Looking at the King James Version. And according to my Bible, it says, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him and saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high place in the mountains, saith unto him, All the kingdoms of the world in a moment of the time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for you that is delivered unto me and to whosoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. 
And Jesus answered him, saying unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give him angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, least, least, least at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, saying unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Better say that last part again. He departed from him for a season. You may be seated, the word of God for the people of God. The devil has never forgotten your address. Just like Jesus didn't forget your address. The devil knows where you live. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have come now with heads bowed First of all, saying thank you because you've been good to us. Regardless of our state, regardless of our situation, regardless of what we think of ourselves, you have been good to us. And some of us recognize that you've been good to us for a mighty long time. Lord, we just came today to say thank you because you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. We were not thinking of ourselves. We were not trying to do good. We were not trying to worship. But you thought about us when we didn't even think of ourselves. As they say, mother has been good to me and father was good to me and my great grandparents were good to me, but you've been better to me than all of us put together. And Lord, we just came today to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You brought us through the pandemic so far so good it's all in your hands you brought us here and you brought us here healthy today and we just came to worship you but we recognize and realize that we have no strength and no power but it's all in your hands so Lord lift us up give us strength give us power raise us on your right hand that we might praise you that we might lift you up so let your Shekinah glory fall on us that everything Hallelujah, you will be okay. In the name of Jesus, we pray and count it done by the blood of Christ. This is my prayer in Christ's name. Amen.
the story about the blind man. He he could not see, but one day, one day, one day, one day, he heard the Jesus. He said, he said, Lord, Lord, do it, Jesus. Lord, do it. Somebody need a touch from Jesus. Lord, Lord, do it for me. Yeah. recognize every Sunday that it's without you father there's nothing I can do nothing I can say and I pray God you would dip me down in wells wisdom draw me up with the cords of love that I'd be able to preach your word that your children will understand you would be glorified and mankind can be saved have your way have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I, I, I can't get away from my raisin. My grandmother said if you start off right, you can end up right. And I know, I know you're ready for a word today. We're not going to prolong the time. There is a word. There's a word for us today. And that word will be coming from the book of Luke. And that's Luke, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to put a tag on that 13th verse. And we find these words. And when. The devil had ended all of the temptations. He departed from him for a season. I want to use for a subject uh, a thought. Sin is an impeachable offense. 
sin is an impeachable offense. And I know we've heard that word impeachment for several, many years now, mainly dealing with our government officials. And, and the idea of impeaching is to get the person out of office. That, that, that's, 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 that's the main idea of, of impeaching. We're trying to get them out of office. And, and our U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, give the rights to the House of Representatives, give them that right to bring charges on those in government positions. And once they bring the charges in, it's turned over to the Senate. I know back in 1970, William uh, Douglas was one of the Supreme Court justices, and he was impeached uh, because he, he dealt with gamblers with his friends. Hippies was his friend. They tried to impeach him, but the impeachment failed. And you know, in 1998, uh, former President Clinton was impeached. But, but the impeachment fails. And when it comes to the Senate, the Senate say, well, he was wrong or you were wrong, but it didn't rise to the point of removing one from office. I wonder, I wonder. How can we impeach the devil? I, 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 I just wonder how can we get him out of our life? Am I right about it? J just because you impeach someone doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be moved out. And, and, and I wonder if the devil is, has been impeached is he allowed to haunt and taunt us in our lives? How long will that take? How long will we deal with that? I, I, I know, I know, I know in the book of James, uh, I believe it's, uh, uh, I, I forget what it is, but it's in the book of James. I think it's the fourth chapter or something in the seventh verse, but it's in the book of James. It says that if, if, if you submit yourself to the Lord, Come on, talk to me. So if you submit yourself to the Lord and resist the devil, say the devil will flee from you. So, so it's almost like it's almost like if you would cut all these lights out in here, put all the shades down, it would be dark. But soon as you get light, darkness has to go. Am I right about that? You, you, you see, Satan doesn't, 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 doesn't like light. He operates in the dark. He don't want you to see it. He one of those folks that throw a rock. Y'all gonna help me preach this morning. Throw a rock and hide his hand. Now, now, the topic today is sin is an impeachable offense. Looking at the scriptures where the text was brought from, we see where Satan, he, he tries to catch you at your weakest point. Now, 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 Jesus had been baptized and he had been led out into the wilderness for 40, 40 days. And then he hadn't eaten anything. You know, we can't go 24 hours. But he had been led into the wilderness 40 days. And then Satan wanted to come and grab him then. He said, now nah, is a good time because I know his, his, his fleshly body, he, he's hungry now. He, he's ready to eat something. Yeah. And Satan tried to, 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 to bring it to him and say, if you are. And Satan know who he is. He know if, he, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. But Jesus heard him say, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And, 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 and the Satan couldn't get him there, so he moved on a little further. 
He went on to say that carried him on a high mountain and overlooked the whole world. And Satan was telling him, if you worship me, in other words, bow down to me and, and, and honor me, all of this shall be thine. Because Satan said, this is mine, but I can give it to who I want. Now, I want to tell you this. Satan was a liar from the beginning. And, and, and we're going to go through some scriptures here to where I'm going to prove he's a liar. of the world and they that dwell therein. That means everything in the world belongs to the Lord and the world. But look here, I ain't going to stop there. I want to go to Psalms 50 and the 10th verse through the 12th verse. It says, for every beast of the forest is mine. And I got, <laughs> I got cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, 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 I know all the fowls of the mountain. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. And he said, now, if I were hungry, I would not even tell thee. For the world is mine. And the fullness thereof belongs to me. So, so in other words, Satan was a liar from the beginning. Now, that's just like me telling you, you telling me. You say, well, pastor, come over to my house. And wash my car. And when you wash my car, I will give you the car you drove over here in. And the car is already mine. In other words, in other words, Satan really belongs to God. <laughs> Satan can't do nothing. He belongs to God. So where the devil tries to, to intimidate us and to break us down to impeach him, many try to get the devil out of their lives and they're unsuccessful by doing it because they don't follow certain rules and protocol. Let, let's see how we can, can ouster or ouster this, 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 this devil out of our lives. First and foremost, sin is an, uh, in other words, Im impeachable offense. For believers, we know we have sinned. We know we have sinned. When we cross the line of right and wrong, when we break God's rules that God has set out for us, we, we know we done messed up. Because the book says the wages of sin in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And not only is that now, in order to impeach the devil, we got to find out first, uh, impeachment requires evidence. You just can't impeach nobody without no evidence. Am I right about that? Let, let's see if we can find some evidence. I, I mean, the Bible tells me that in, in Romans uh, 3.23, it says, if all, all of us have sinned, the self-righteous one, you've sinned. The one that thinks they're so goody-goody, you've sinned. And so all of us have come short of the glory of God. Am I right about it? If you think you hadn't come short of the glory of God, let me just remind you of a few things that might pull your mind into recollection. Am I right about that? Many of us fall short of drugs. Mm -hmm. Many of us get hooked up on drugs and, and, and we'll start doing some things that the Lord told us not to do, but we'll do them anyhow. And, and some will get hooked up on opioids. In other words, it, they, they, they're legal drugs, but they're legal, but we take too many of them. We, 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 we go against the grain. And, and, but if, if that's not yours, if that's not yours, I'm, I'm coming on your front porch. I'm coming. I'm headed to you. If you're not part of that, maybe you're part of those that lie all the time. Every time your mouth opens up, you're telling a story. Maybe you're a gossiper and you're spreading out something that's untrue. 
Maybe you can't go in a department store. You got sticky hands. You shoplifting. You picking up stuff. You go in there with big clothes on, but when you come out, you got some clothes underneath those big clothes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like y'all don't know. And, 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 but maybe, maybe, maybe none of that's yours. But maybe you are a cheater. And maybe you are disobeying the Ten Commandments. Now, I know I got you there. You in one of them categories. So, so all of us, all of us, from the pulpit to the back door, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Am I right about it? And so we have messed up. And when we mess up, we need someone to redeem us. We need someone to get us out. So, so, so these three different things that we need to look at how to get Satan out. First, we recognize that, that sin is an impeachable offense. And, and then second, we, we must recognize that you got to have some evidence in order to impeach someone out. I gave you a list of evidence that Satan has caused us to fall down to. So there is the evidence, but let me give you another phrase. Some see the evidence, but won't remove the devil. Some, some see it, but, 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 but won't remove the devil. It is one thing to impeach a public official, but removing someone that has been impeached is a hard thing to do. Uh, 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 in other words, three U.S. presidents have been impeached, but not one had been removed from office. And, and listen, the reason that is usually given is that we know that the impeached conduct was wrong, but it did not rise to the level of impeachment. So that explains how the devil stays in our lives for so, many, for so many people. They have seen the evidence of sin in their lives, but they don't think it's bad enough to remove it altogether. So they allow Satan to continuously influence their lives. And, and let me tell you this. There, there are some sins that we get caught up in. We, 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 we drag ourselves in. And, and somehow we can't get out of them. We, 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 we do something because the devil got me in a, in a vice grip. I kind of like what he's doing on this end. But I know it's wrong on this end. But I'm caught between right and wrong. And if I, if I give it up, it's going to bother my pocketbook over here. I see I got to pay my light bill over here. So I, I, I'm caught up in a, in, in a triangle. And, and, and many times we get ourselves in these predicaments and wonder how can we get out. And similarly, many know what's making them do wrong. Many of us know what's making us do wrong. We, we kind of like it. And y'all can, y'all, 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 my way get with me on this. And, and, and those of you who are not so spiritual can go back a few years. Y'all know Luther Ingram? Y'all heard of Luther Ingram? Somebody can help me preach the rest of it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We get in a position. <laughs> help me preach, Lord. Help me. We get in a position that we like what we're doing. And, 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 and Luther, Luther Ingram would say, if, if loving you is wrong, cool, I don't want to do right. And, 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 and then there was a, a, another a songwriter, uh, uh, he said, I've been loving you too long. <laughs> I don't want to stop now. Am I right about that? What I'm trying to say, we can get caught, so caught up in sin that, that we can't get ourselves out. We, we, we stuck and we don't know how to turn loose and get out of it. 
And I want you to know, but I want to tell you today how you can get out of it and how we have to do to get out of it. Am I right about that? So you listen to me close. We, we can get out of it. And I want to say that to my brothers and my sisters, if we want to remove the devil out of our lives, we can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it. We, 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 we can't do it. We, 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 we can't. We just can't do it because Satan is so. But we can't throw him out because we don't have the power to throw him out. Because because many times, just like Paul said, when I ooh, when I want to do right, wrong is always there. And Paul went on to say that the things I say I'm going to do, I don't do. And the thing that I say that I'm, that I'm not going to do, that's what I do. Paul said, who's going to save this old wretched man like me? Jesus, God is the one that's going to save us. He's the only one that can save us. And we are going to stop. Many times we say, we're going to stop smoking. We're going to stop. But the devil won't let us quit. We're going to say we're going to stop drugs. But the devil won't let us quit. We're going to say, I know I'm too fat, too big. I need to back up off of these cookies. We're going to say, we're going to stop eating chocolate chip cookies. But soon as you go into, soon as you go in the subway, they, they, they got some raisin and chocolate chips. And I keep telling myself, I can't have that. But soon as I go in there, they call my name. And we get in a position where we, we can't stop. In other words, uh, I guess you say I'm using too many songwriters. <laughs> I, I, we get into a position where we say, I, I'm just too weak. Can help me somebody. Too weak to fight. And, and so when you get like that, the next thing you need to do is call on the Lord. You say, I'm going to stop doing this, and I'm going to stop doing that. But the next time you turn around, you're doing it again. And if you want to remove the devil, don't try to do it yourself. Take it to the Lord in prayer. When you truly belong to God, God will take care of you. I don't know about you. And I know in the back, I didn't give him this text, but I'm going to give it to him now. I want you to pull up Isaiah, the 40th chapter, 28th through the 31st verse. In, in other words, when you're going and you're talking to God, you, you're trying to get something accomplished, and you don't know which direction you're going in, and you need some help to stand up to what you want to do, I want you to know how to do it and what you ought to do while you're doing. we got to learn that we're going to have to wait on the Lord. God may not come when you call him, but I want you to know he's always on time. He's always on time. He's always on time. Isaiah 40 and the 28th verse. And, 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 and we find those words and it can plainly tell us what we need to do. In other words, I, I, I thank the Lord for what he has done and what he will do. Because I know he's a God that's too wise to make a mistake. Am I right about that? To God be the glory. And we're going to go to that 28th verse. It says, Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the young, the youth, shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But look here. I'm like a horse pouring in the valley. Come on, bring it on now. Come on with the next verse. Y'all don't get stuck there. But anyway, but they, but they, 
that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not the devil nowhere unless God steps in. And many times we have to learn to wait on the Lord and he will step in at his own proper time. They that wait on the Lord shall mount up like wings of eagles. Am I right about it? And I want you to know that when, 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 when the devil comes and he starts raging in your life, he starts bringing storms in your life, he starts bringing problems after problems in your life, I want you to run to God because that is an impeachable offense. When you wake up in the morning and, and you find out your children have gone astray, that is an impeachable offense. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Am I right about it? Because the God will. He will calm the sea. He will calm the wind. But you got to be able to wait on him. He'll do it in his own God-like time. They that wait on the Lord, don't give up. Wait on the Lord. He may not come when you want him. But how many know God is all? How many know God is all, always on time? Am I right about it? He's my way maker. He's my light. He's the one I need. In other words, he's water when I'm thirsty. He's bread when I'm hungry. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. How many know he's a doctor in the hospital? How many know he's a cancer removing God? I'm one that's living, moving, breathing from cancer. God stepped in. Am I right about it? I've been sitting in a courtroom. God is a judge. He's a judge. He's a lawyer. I've been in a bank. God is my banker. I've been in a mechanic shop. God is my mechanic when I need a car. When I need a car, it, it's ironic. God will just place you in a position. And a car show up. You, you wonder why I show You've been praying for it. And one will just show up. You, you need a truck. You, you've been praying for it. One day you drive down the road, you see it. it, it it'll just... <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? See... But you got to learn to wait on him. Wait till God bring it to you. And when he bring it to you, won't he do it? Do I have any won't he do it in the house? And God is not mocked. You want to impeach the devil out of your life. First you must give it to God. Because we know we all have sinned and messed up. We all, we need the devil out of our lives. Go to God in prayer. Because sin is an impeachable offense. But just to impeach the devil, he won't, we can't get him out. We need some extra authority. Paul will tell you that. And we go through the same thing. How many of us say we wasn't going to do something? And before the day end up, you're doing what you say you're not going to do. So all of us have messed up. And, and, and none of us don't need to look around and put nobody else down. Look at Sister Stone, so she's doing this. But look what you're doing. If we pay more attention to our own business and leave other folks' business alone, am I right about it? If we pay more attention to our own business <laughs> and leave other folks' business alone. Isn't that right about that? Don't that get on your nerves? Somebody sweeping around your front porch in a whole junkyard in front of theirs. That'll make you almost cuss, but anyway, you try to do the right thing. It will, it will, it will. I pray hard not to do that, but it, it, it makes you sometimes. It makes you. 
it, 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 it make you, it, it make you, it, 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 it'll make you, especially with these uh, callers on the telephone. And you done told them over and over. And they call back again. <laughs> and every morning, I don't pray every morning real early, but sometimes I have a late prayer. And they catch me before I get my prayer in for that day. And then words come out of my mouth that sometimes I don't want to say. And, uh, and, uh, see, see, see why I need to pray? See, uh, see all, all of us have come short of the glory of God. Because the devil will pull on that last nerve. He'll pull that last nerve and make you go ziggy boom boom if you haven't been prayed up. But uh, but uh, those of <laughs> those of you who may be listening out there on YouTube, Facebook, and you want to give your life to Christ, it's the most important thing about hearing the word. Give your life to Christ. I want you to know you can you can come call St. John. Our deacon is Deacon John Hemp Hill. He's the chairman of our deacon board. You call him. And he will give you the directions as how to follow through down the Romans road. He will give you what you need to be saved. And I want you to know that salvation is the greatest thing all of us can reach out for. Because all of us need that. And, and Deacon John Hemphill's number is 704-524-6873. Call that number. And maybe you, not just for being saved, maybe you enjoyed the church service. And you might be living in Massachusetts. You might be living in California. You might, be, you might want to become a part of this church. You maybe want to be a member of this church. And, and, and Deacon Hemp Hill can, can direct you as to what to do, how to get set up. You can be a, a, a member from a distance. But the God that we serve and the God that we praise is everywhere at the same time. And, and, and if you've been watching today and you, you like the service and you want to send a financial donation, a gift, and I want to say to you, don't think whatever your gift you send. Don't worry about it being too small because whatever you send in Jesus' name, he can increase it. He can increase it. Just like he did with the two fish and five barley loaves. Bring what you got, and I will bless it. I will multiply it. And, and you can give by uh, cash, bringing it to the church. Someone will come out and get it. Uh, you can write a check, mail it to the St. John's address here in Gastonia. PayPal, Giblify. God has set up ways for you to give in his vineyard. Give in his vineyard and watch how he bless you. Watch how he pick you up. Watch how he turn you around. He will do the undone for you. And I don't know about you, but I remember last week when I asked for an offering, uh, a seed offering, and I gave of a seed offering. And I want you to know that this past week, I, I, it came back to me, and I was surprised to get it. Came back more than I gave, and, and and God works like that. I mean, He does things like that. But I've grown to the point that I trust Him, and I, and, and I have faith in Him, and, and and I'm like the three Hebrew boys, even if He don't. <laughs> Even if he don't, I'm going to trust him anyway. If he don't, it's not because he can't. He's just not ready to do it right now. And we're going to stay with the Lord. And, and I like uh, our 
our lesson this morning, our Sunday school lesson about Job and our teacher. She did a great job today. But staying with the, the Lord and watch what he'll do. He'll do the undone. And I want to say to those who are out there in uh, the media ministry, keep you in our prayers. Pray for us. Even if you don't have anything to give, just pray for us. God will do the undone. And if any way you want to contact the pastor, you can always give me a call at 704-864-6222. And I will get back to you if I'm not there when the call comes through. It's extension 208. And I'll be glad to talk to you and help you along the way because that's my job. I want to do all I can while I'm here. I don't want to wait till I'm almost dead or weak and wondering I should have done this, I would have, should have, could have. I want to do all I can so I won't have any excuses why God has given me this health and strength. He, he's letting me know already time ain't long as it has been with aches and pains and other stuff that he shows up with. But uh, if you notice that, God is doing the same thing. But I want to say to, to, to the media ministry, thank you for tuning in today. We're going to get ready and, and move out. And I want you to know I will see you next week, the same time and the same place. And hopefully next week, the media ministry we may have a new speaker next week. So you tune in to the Black History Program. We got a Californian coming out. And you tune in and hear a magnanimous word coming from him next week. Same time, same place. As the young folks say, peace, see you.